Hello again. Uh, welcome back to Lightroom Classic CC with Bickington Photographic Club. Um, in the first tutorial we gave you a brief overview of this, our library panel. Um, what we're going to do in this tutorial very quickly is to actually bring some images into Lightroom in what is generally considered to be the preferred way. Um, now, as with many software tools, there are different ways of doing things and whichever way you find most comfortable, uh, I would say go with, but this way does make sure that you are least likely to duplicate images and take up needless space on your hard drive. So, what we're going to do is we're going to very simply click our import button. And after a few moments it will bring up this screen. Now as you can see across the top of my screen um, I have the word copy highlighted. Now that's because it's reading from an SD card at the moment um, as opposed to reading from my hard drive. So you can see down here the different file sources that are located. It's reading from this EOS digital card rather than from my passport which is what I want it to read from and I never want to be using copy I want to be using add so that's showing you how not to do it let me just click the cancel and I'm going to eject the SD card which you'll have just heard there and reopen my import button and you'll notice straight away this time I've got add and not copy. So many people copy directly from an SD card onto Lightroom and Lightroom creates its own folder in your hard drive saving the images there and you then later download from the SD card onto a different location on the same hard drive and you end up with duplicate images with different names in different locations and you end up in all kinds of mess. So this is the easiest way to avoid that happening. Download your images from your card to your hard drive outside of Lightroom. Once you've done that, find the file that you have the information saved in, which I'm doing here. Obviously we're Bickington Photographic Club and we have a tutorials folder set up down here. We even have a YouTube tutorial images folder set up and if I just click that folder there it says no photos but if I were to include the subfolders then I obviously get this message saying that subfolders are included I don't want to see that message again I'm happy for that to be the case and you can see here now a selection of images now these images are thumbnails we can alter the size of those thumbnails so that we can have them larger or smaller. And you'll notice that all the thumbnails currently have a little white tick or check in the left hand corner. That can be changed using the check all or uncheck all. The one thing you'll notice when you use the images when they're checked is they're quite a lot brighter and easier to view. I'll just make them slightly bigger for you. There we are. If I uncheck them, they suddenly go that little bit darker. So sometimes it be, can be quite awkward to pick the one you want to use because it's a little bit dark. So I tend to have them all checked to begin with, look at the ones I want and just simply uncheck the ones I don't want, like so. However, in this instance, we're going to have all of them brought in. So you just put the check all on. If you want to look at one particular image, remember your loop view at the bottom here. You can select an image which puts this light grey box around it and then click your loop view. And that will bring that one image up on the screen for you to have a closer look at. But for now we're going to go back to our gallery. We've got all of these images here and we need to have a look at the information on the right hand side of our box. Here we've got file handling. Okay, Smart previews we'll talk about later on in our Lightroom learning because it's a little bit more complex. 
don't import suspected duplicates is dead handy because it means Lightroom will automatically detect files of the same name and it will leave them unchecked during import so you don't end up with more than one version of the same image. Below that you'll see we've got add to collection. We'll come back to that once we've taught you a little bit more about collections which comes up in the next tutorial. During your import you have different things that you can apply. We strongly recommend that you apply your metadata to your images. This is going to help you with copywriting because it will have all of the EXIF data for the image such as where it was taken, uh, the date it was taken, the time it was taken, the camera it was taken with, the lens, the aperture, the shutter speed, etc, etc, etc. And to help you out a little bit more, you've also got keywords. So I know these were taken at Cofton Country Park. So I can put those in as keywords. And if you separate your keywords with a comma, there'll be separate uh, search tools later on when you're looking for images. Now these were taken in 2016, so I can put that date in. Um, and they were of cars obviously. Um, so that gives you an example of how to use your keywords. Once you've done that and you've got the images you want selected, simply click the import button which will take you back to the library screen. Hey presto, the images you wanted have appeared in your library and if we open our catalogue tab we can see here that our previous import shows six images. One, two, three, four, five and six. So that's a basic import with Lightroom Classic CC. We're Bickington Photographic Club. We'll see you for the next one very soon. Thanks.